At the reunion of the free speech movement 20 years later, Bettina Aptaker, who was one of the women leaders of the movement, and a woman I considered my mentor in many ways, got up in the audience, and the first thing she did was she named herself back through her female line and introduced her mother. And then she apologized to the women in the free speech movement. She said, I apologize. I apologize. I was an only child, and therefore I was always gendered, neither male or female. And I was one of the boys in this movement. And I participated in the oppression of women. And I apologize. Well, it was a very powerful moment in which many of the women in the audience cried because if you look back, for example, at the free speech movement uh, from the eyes of, let's say, 1970, 1971, and the beginning of the women's movement, you realize that in many ways it was just as patriarchal and male-dominated as was most of the left. And uh, many of the women, you know, you know, did the typing and got the coffee and uh, went on the demonstrations, and the men talked the big line and made the decisions and so forth. And what happened in the... in, in the early 70s is that the women, mostly women of the left, rebelled essentially against um, this whole system and started looking uh, on their own and started defining themselves. It's hard, for, it's hard for a kid growing up now to realize that in 1964, 5, 6, whenever, if a woman sat on a park bench reading a book, chances were she would be interrupted and that the man who came up to her would assume that she would rather talk to him than read the book. If two women were in a restaurant eating together, it was common for a man or a couple of men to come up to them and assume that they were there to be talked to and that they weren't there for any purpose of themselves. It's hard to believe that this happened because it doesn't, and that really has changed. I mean, there really have been significant changes in our relationships. And, uh, but that was not true in, in the 60s. And so what began to happen in 1970, 71, is that women began to they set up these consciousness raising groups in which they would, for the first time, not be interrupted. And everything was talked about, you know, everything from high school to your first menstruation to your first sex to go, you know, everything was talked about. But the principle was that you went around in a circle and no one interrupted you. And that's when women suddenly understood that their own personal history was significant. And that's where the phrase, the personal, is political came from because women began to understand and they began to relook at the movements that they had been in and started seeing their downside. They started seeing that um, that some of the old oppressions were just being carried over to the left. The same patriarchal stuff, the same sexual oppression, intellectual oppression, all kinds of stuff like that was happening within that movement. And so they started creating their own other movements. And I think that made me start looking at these groups, um, these uh, sort of stri strictly left old guard political groups in a very different way. I could no longer look at them and not see the relationships that I had, that had been invisible to me. All those relations had been totally invisible to me in the 60s, in the early 60s. I didn't see them. I didn't notice them until they became made, until they were made apparent.